Well, okay, this is Jake coming at you. I am driving in my car right now. I'm heading down to Long Beach. And from my house to Long Beach, that's about an hour and uh, 30 to 40 minutes away. So I've got a little bit of time to kill and I'm on the road. So yeah, we haven't done any shows here recently in the past, I believe, four weeks. First, it was COVID-19. It was the whole difficulty of doing what we do. Uh, we were recording at Tom's uh, studio, you know, studio, but it's actually his garage. And, um, you know, we didn't feel it was safe for Tom's family or for, you know, everybody. We abided by the social distancing and we did not meet at uh, Tom's studio. So we haven't been doing the show. And plus, you know, it's been a, I guess I could turn off the radio while I'm doing this. And plus, it's been difficult. Um, these times that we're in right now are just unprecedented. They're, they're crazy. I mean, I've never lived through anything like this before in my life. And um, I was just having a hard time coming on the air and doing a show where we, where there's nothing fun to talk about. There's, I mean, there's always some fun stuff going on somewhere, but I mean, the majority of the news and what's on everybody's minds right now has been COVID-19. And now it is the whole thing in Minnesota with Mr. George Floyd. And it just seems like you know, Radio Underland, we have a show, and we do a show, and a lot of people want to tune into our show for the good times, for the laughing, for the, the jokes, the games, and the lightheartedness of what we do. And there's been episodes in the past where I have ranted about police brutality and the things that are going on in this country, and whether it was Michael Brown, whether it was, um, you know, it just there's been so many of them, but whenever we would dive into those darker topics or not the happy topics or not the fun stuff uh, some people enjoyed it some people didn't and um, I kind of in the past I kind of felt that the whole dark delving into the social injustices that are happening in this country I kind of felt that it was a little too dark for our normal listeners and so it's something that I've kind of shied away from a little bit I mean, you still get a couple beers in, in me and I'll go on a rant and I will talk about it, but it's something that I've kind of tried to avoid. But here we find ourselves today in this situation or this social climate of what's going on and it is very, it's unignorable. It's something that can't be swept underneath the rug. It's something that is horrible that's been happening. In, it's been happening in our society for a long time, okay? Let's get this straight. I mean, this is police brutality and injustices served on citizens by the police is something that's been going on in this, our society, for a long time. And you see the uprising in Minnesota, the uprising, the protest, the, the rioting. I mean, I guess you call it rioting. I mean, they're burning down buildings. And when I say they, I mean the, the, the practitioners that are out there. And it's not just one race that's out there protesting. It's, 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 it's a lot of people. Everybody's pissed off right now, okay? Everybody's pissed off. And what's going on in Minnesota, you know, I, I see a lot of people and the first thing they say is, well, what did Target or what did AutoZone or what did whatever the, the uh, commercial, um, you know, enterprise that's been rioted and looted or burned to the ground, you know, people say all the time, well, what did they have to do with it? And I see things a little differently. Now, first off, I don't necessarily condone destructive rioting or destructive looting. And when I say I don't condone it, I mean, I don't condone it for myself because as a libertarian, the only person that I'm worried about regulating is myself. And it's not something I don't think that I would partake in. But at the same time, does destructive rioting work and the unfortunate thing about this whole situation is I believe that it does okay here we were a year ago or I don't know the timeline more than that for the last few years athletes people of color have been taking their knee in protest in a peaceful protest of what is going on in this country did it do any good well, it brought a little bit of attention, but it, did it really change things? And my response to that is no, it did not change a thing. You know, they were taking a knee 
for police brutality or against police brutality. And I don't believe that those peaceful protests had changed anything. Now today, Minnesota, they arrested the officer that was charged with, or the, the officer that was involved with putting his knee in the neck of George Floyd. They arrested him today. And the charges are third degree murder and manslaughter. Okay, they didn't get into too, to too many details, but I did watch the press conference with the police chief, and uh, that's what he was saying. So they did arrest him. Now, my question is, would he have been arrested if nobody said anything? And I think the sad reality of that is, hell no. Nothing would have happened. I think at best, at best, if there wasn't a video involved, we would have never heard about this situation. Now let's say that there was the video that was released, but it didn't come along with protest and rioting. Well, I think if it would have just been the video released and people just complaining about it online, I think at best what we could have seen was an officer being put on suspension until further investigation. I think that's, I think that's at best what we could have experienced in that situation. Now you combine the video with a peaceful protest. Well, if the protest would have remained peaceful, I think at best in that situation, what we might have gotten, which we haven't gotten in the past, but what we might have gotten was the officer being fired. But I don't believe that there's any chance in hell that without a violent riot of a protest, that officer would be arrested with murder and manslaughter charges. I just don't think it would have happened. I think that the violent rioting was the only thing that would have brought about that result. So, you know, let's go back to that question where you're talking about where people say, well, why Target? Why, why AutoZone? Why these businesses? Why these, why these private businesses? Well, see, sometimes I think that the violence is the only thing that brings some type of a change. Now, it's very unfortunate because in this situation, it's like suicide, okay? The people that are out there protesting and rioting are destroying their own communities. They really are. But sometimes you have to scream so loud and do these type of things to get the attention to make a change. It's unfortunate, it's, in, it's very unfortunate that our politicians and the people that regulate, that have control under over these police departments, that the people that are in control of the training of the police departments and how they handle their interactions with the public. It's very unfortunate that the only way to get their ear is when you start jabbing them in the pocketbook. And we've seen that happen in Ferguson. We've seen that happen in LA. You can date that all the way back to the Rodney King riots. And I believe in Los Angeles, let's take, let's take that for example. In Los Angeles, the riots came. And I believe that it did change the LAPD. And it changed the way that they handle things and what they do. I believe it did make a change. So for the people that say, oh, a violent riot, a violent looting and all this other kind of stuff. And we know that there's looters out there that are just jumping on the bandwagon. But what, what, is, what this really does is it puts a dollar amount price and a value on George, his life. You know, before the rioting and the looting, he was just another black man that a bad police officer took out. And you know, the, the, the statistics are that police have taken out 400 American civilians this year alone, okay? But he became more than just another black man when society stood up and when they started doing some damage. I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but you know, these burning target stores, auto zones, this community, the, there was a housing development that went up in flames. Those elements put a price tag on the value of George's life. And it's still not comparable to what George's life was really worth, but it starts to put value on it in the eyes of the politicians. Violent, rioting, looting. And violent might be a, a, a bad term to use because I haven't seen uh, violence on people during these, you know, 
during all the coverage coverage that's been going on, whether it be Facebook live streams or or whatever, I haven't really seen violence other than police officers firing tear gas and that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, other than from the police, but amongst the protesters themselves or the rioters or the looters, however you want to classify it, uh, I haven't seen the violence. But that value on George's life gets the attention of the politicians. It makes them stand back and think, you know what? If one of our officers does this again, we can't afford to go through this again. And you know what that does? That devaluizes the worth of bad cops. You know, is it worth having the cop that was involved with George? I forget his name, I don't have it in front of me, and I'm driving, so I'm not gonna Google it on my phone. But the main cop that was involved with George, the guy already had 19 complaints against him for police brutality. 19, 19. Now who was responsible to have an officer in your department with 19 counts of inappropriate behavior, or at least allegations from the public, we know some of those could be false, but in this situation, I kind of feel like a few of those were real. 19, when do you do something about it? Well, unfortunately for Minnesota, unfortunately for that, that those cities that are affected back there, unfortunately, they didn't do anything about it till the rioting happened. They didn't. They didn't. And don't tell me that, you know, one of the things that did bother me in the uh, press conference today from the police chief there in Minnesota, he was saying, we had to wait until we had all of our evidence ready to prosecute before we made the arrest on the officer involved in the, in, in the George Floyd um, murder. And I call bullshit. I call bullshit. If it would have been you, me, any other civilian not wearing a badge that was on video doing what that officer did, we would have been arrested on the in, in a heartbeat. They wouldn't have waited for jack shit. Okay, they because you know why they waited? Because they had no intention of arresting this man. They had no intention of bringing charges against an officer. But you know what? Shit started hitting the fan. Shit started hitting the fan in such an extreme way that they said, holy shit, we have to do something now. And it took them four days. And the police chief was just bragging on himself about how fast that they moved. And I call bullshit. I call bullshit. Moving fast would have been Officers on the scene, they see the video, they arrest him right there on the spot. Four days later, when you have millions of dollars of damage in your city, is not moving fast. It's just not. So back to the violence of the riots, um, or the destruction, or let's say the money that has been um, gone up in flames in these cities. It's sad, it's sad for America. It's sad for America, and I'll tell you why it's sad. It's sad that things have to go this far for people to respond. That is what is sad about it. Now, I hope that change does occur. And you know it is, there is, like I said, there is opportunities, opportunists that are out there looting and jumping on the bandwagon, but I have a, I have a feeling that, that the majority of the people that are taking to the streets right now are genuinely pissed off. And it's not just the black community, at least from what I'm seeing, it's not just the black community that's pissed off. I think it's finally come to the point where Americans, the majority of Americans, and it took them a long time to come around to it, but the majority of Americans are really pissed off. President Trump's pissed off. You know, I, I saw other police chiefs from other areas such as Long Beach, etc., making statements. They're pissed off. You know, there are departments. I, I, when I see something like what happened to George, I, I have to think about my local area. And of course, you guys know that I live in Southern California. And part of me, part of me wants to be optimistic and think that what happened to George would not happen in my local areas here in Southern California. I want to believe, I want to think that the police have been better trained in their interactions with people and that they will not violate the rights of individuals. You know, you have to remember, in this situation in, in Minnesota, this is all from a, allegedly from a phone call with a store claiming that George was 
forging a check or writing a fake check or some type of, of a check fraud. Now it comes to find out that that wasn't the case at all, but that is what the claim was. So you mean to tell me that these officers, it's, it's not a violent, even if, even going into the situation under the assumption that this guy was writing a bad check. Well, they had him in handcuffs. They had him, you know, they had, they had him in custody and even to press it as far as to murder this guy over uh, a victimless crime. You know, nobody else was hurt. It's not like George was in the store assaulting the store owner or assaulting people in the parking lot or doing anything of violent behavior. The call was based on fraudulent check. You know, and, 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 and you know, I think about that. I think about that scenario just in its own fraudulent check. Well, look what time we're in. Look what's going on in society today. People are out of work. They're laid off. They're not working. I mean, even as a police officer going into that situation, it seems like you would be a little bit more compassionate and talk to the gentleman and find out what's going on. You know, is this guy out of work? Is he not getting the Trump $1,200 bonus? Or has he spent it out? Is he trying to feed his family? Where was the compassion in that call whatsoever, especially considering the time that we're in right now with COVID-19 and one out of four Americans unemployed? You know, where was the mind of these officers? They didn't give a fuck. They just did not give a fuck. And it pisses, it pisses me off. It pisses a lot of people off. Will it bring a change? I guess that's the big question. I think it will. I think that, especially in Minnesota, for that local government, that local communities, I mean, they basically, their community has, is, 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 is attempting suicide on themselves, burning down all the property in the stores, etc. I mean, there's so much damage being done that the government has to stand up and say something. When I'm talking the government, I'm talking about the mayor, city council, police chief, etc. They have to do something to ensure that this doesn't come again. You know, in the big stores like Target and all those guys, they're insured, they're gonna get paid off, it's gonna happen. But still, even, even there's a trickle down effect that happens. Rioting and looting to this magnitude, this kind of damage, you think Target's not gonna throw their weight around in the local political scene and say, hey, what are you guys gonna do to make sure that this happens again? Because the root, the root of this and what sparked it all off was one bad officer. So Target, AutoZone, Wendy's, whatever st other commercial stores that are there, they wanna know what are you going to do to ensure that a, 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 an atrocity like that does not happen again in the city and we lose our business. So I think there is a trickle down um, impact of this kind of behavior, destructive behavior. And like I said, don't get me wrong, I don't necessarily condone it, but I understand what's going on. And I also understand that I do believe that this kind of violent activity will create a change. Now it's at a cost, it's at a cost. It's at a cost of destroying their local uh, communities, businesses, etc. It comes at an extremely high cost, you know? It really does. It's a sad situation and I want to see change. Uh, what's going on? Oh, I got an alert on my car because I'm heading towards the railroad tracks. Anyways, uh, like I said, I'm just uh, doing this as I drive and uh, I'm not holding a microphone. I'm not, not doing anything like that. I'm just driving and talking to myself. I look like a crazy person going down the road because I'm just yelling in my car, but hey, it's the way it, it's the way it is. So, that's why that's one of the reasons why we haven't done a show it's just it's just bad times now this whole um, um, George Floyd thing it, it, it just seems like something easy to be spoke out about I know Stefan is super passionate about everything that's going on right now um, everybody should be passionate about what's going on right now you know what I mean it's 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 disheartening it's 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 horrible you know it's sparking off these other uh, places of unrest across the country and um, this is something that affects the whole country. Now, let's talk about the good cops for a little bit. Because we know that one of the roots of this problem is the thin blue line. And, you know, everybody says, well, not all cops are that way. Not all cops are that way. Well, I'll tell you what. If you are a cop and you claim to be a good cop and you're standing with your arms to your side or in your pocket and watching this kind of behavior go on, guess what? You're not a, blue, a good cop. 
You're just not. You're as bad as everybody else. You're an accomplice. You're, you're, you, you aid to the bad behavior that's going on. And there has been cops, police chiefs, police officers across the country standing up and condemning this. And you know what? They should. They should. Fuck that blue line bullshit. You want to be a real hero as a police officer? Stand up against the corruption. You know? Make your voice heard. You know, if Officer Dillweed is doing dumb shit, get him out of the department. Now, there's been a debate I saw come up today, and it was an interesting take on this whole situation. And basically what they were talking about was having officers individually carry their own insurance policies for uh, their job. Now, this isn't unheard of. Medical professionals, doctors, uh, there's a lot of people in professions that carry their own liability insurance. And I heard some people say, well, you know, they, if they have to carry liability insurance, then they're going to want more money to pay for that liability insurance. And, you know, it's just going to screw us over. I'll tell you what, we're already getting screwed over. Because every time an officer does something bad, shoots a six-year-old, which happened earlier this year, you know, shoots a lady standing on the porch at her house that called the cops because she heard a noise in the alley and then the cops show up and put a bullet in her and kill her at 60 yards away when she was the one that called the cops for the police for, uh, for help. You know what I mean? We're already paying for it. Lawsuits hit the police department left and right. And you know who's liable now? We are the taxpayers. We carry that burden. It's already costing us a shit ton of money. So liability insurance, let's think about that. Doctors do it. Medical malpractice insurance, you know, why not? Why not explore that? You know, if, if the police off, uh, if the police chiefs or the people in charge can't regulate their bad officers, like the officer in the George Floyd case where he had, what was it, 16, 19 um, um, incidents against him for police brutality. Well, I'll tell you what. If that motherfucker had to carry a private insurance policy, he would have had his insurance canceled by now and would have been kicked off of the force because he can't practice as a police officer without insurance. I'm not saying it's the all-in-all -all solution, but I'll tell you what. I know that there's a lot of problems in the police department now where bad officers have the backing of corrupt unions that legally protect their ass and keep them from getting fired. Well, you know, if there was a simple thing going where you had a third party, an insurance company, that reviews their clients that are practicing law, and if they have too many issues coming up, and, you know, in those issues, their premiums raise, you know, every time they choke out somebody, well, guess what? Your premium just went up. And if you keep acting up, you're going to be uninsurable. And if you're uninsurable, one of the requirements to practice law as a police officer is to have liability insurance. And if you can't get covered, then guess what? You don't work no more. It's almost like the bad officers, the, this system would kind of weed them out with a third party that would go, that would go beyond the union. It would go beyond bad police chiefs. I don't know. It's just something to think about. Now let's uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff that's going on. Okay. Um, now I don't know if these are conspiracy theories or or what, but let's touch on it. Let's let's touch on what's going on. Apparently, I, there was an article that's been released, and like I said, I'm driving. I don't have a computer in front of me. I don't have notes. I'm off the cuff here. So, uh, but there was another article that was released uh, where they were interviewing this lady that owned a club there in Minnesota. It was like the El Ranchito, whatever whatever. I, I, I searched it online. I looked at some pictures. It looks like a good size club and uh, they had live music and that kind of stuff going on. Anyways, the owner of that club, it was a female. I don't have her name, but it was a female that owned that club. And she's claiming that George was a security guard at her club. It's uh, got to be a pretty good sized club. She said that they had about 12 security guards that worked there and George was one of them. Uh, she said that one of her friends pointed it out that, hey, look, look at look at the George a little closer, Mr. Floyd. That is the guy that worked for your club. And she's like, oh yeah, he is. He's, you know, and, and she was, okay, whatever. So she's confirming that George worked at her club. And then she also said this, that the officer that was involved with Floyd 
and I wish I had his name in front of me, but I don't have it. <coughs> Anyways, the officer that was involved with Freud, uh, they used at the club for their off-duty police officer. A lot of times, these a lot of times these clubs will hire an off-duty police officer. And uh, in this situation, he just kind of parked outside of the club and he was there if needed. Uh, he didn't work inside the club with the other security officers, but there were 12 security officers on the inside. And this officer was outside of this club. And she stated that he had worked for the club for 17 years. Now, if this is true, if this is true, you know, she said that she couldn't confirm that they knew each other. But I'll tell you what, I've worked at clubs, I've worked with at clubs that have, you know, 10, 11 uh, security officers. Uh, they all know each other. All the security knows each other. And if there's a off-duty police officer outside, believe me, they all know each other. So if that is true, that brings up a whole different ball, you know, that's a whole different ball game. And I, you know, I hate to speculate, but you know, if we're gonna talk about it, I mean, do you think something happened to the club? Do you think that, is there a woman involved? What is going on? You know what I mean? But I'll tell you what, if they did work together, then this officer used his badge for some premeditated murder, first degree murder. So I'm waiting for more uh, exploration into that. I'm sure that we will hear more details of that in the future. Um, there's gotta be people that are, if that is true, if it is true, because this is alleged, I don't know. It's an article that came out. Uh, it, it appeared to be from a legit source, but we don't know. We don't know yet. But I'll tell you what, if you work for this 12 security guards, then there's uh, 11 guys that are willing to talk and willing to talk about the officer that used to patrol the parking lot. So that's a, that's an interesting, um, right now, um, I, I almost, I, I, I don't quite classify it as full-blown conspiracy, but it's definitely in the conspiracy uh, category. Now, the other uh, issue that has been popping up that is conspiracy that may or may not be true, but it is starting to be get covered in alternative media, was that there was a gentleman when the riots first started in Minnesota, he was an all black gas mask with purple canisters, a black umbrella, a claw hammer, uh, military style boots. And he was the first one to start doing the destructive behavior. He walked up to the auto zone, he took the claw hammer and he just started knocking out windows. And uh, there was like five or six people around him. Some people were trying to approach him. Um, and now there's photos circulating of a police officer in St. Paul, Minnesota. And the eyes to me look pretty similar. We can only see the eyes through the, the, through the, the gas mask. So you can't really, it's hard to identify, but they are claiming that uh, that person that first broke out those windows was an officer from the St. Paul, Minnesota Police Department. Now, a lot of people say, well, why why would the police department do that? Blah, 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 blah. That doesn't sound right, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't know exactly, but I can tell you this. You know, and, and they also say, well, why would one guy breaking out some uh, windows? That doesn't mean that it would start the fires and start everything else. I'll tell you, you know what? People, especially when you have a flock of people together, a gaggle of people, a, a mass of people in one location, it all it takes is one guy to start doing something to spark the behavior off in the rest of the people. It's almost like it's it's like pushing them over the edge. I and if you don't believe me, <coughs> if you don't believe me, have you ever been to a concert? Let's say a metal concert or some hard music concert. All right, I, shit, they do it in ED, EDM music now. Um, but all it takes is one guy in a crowd to start moshing to ignite a whole mosh pit. So I mean that kind of behavior, it could spark off a lot of civil unrest you know the once the glass breaks boom you know I, I i've you've been in situations where you're in a you're in a crowd and, and it all it takes is one idiot to throw the first punch and then it breaks into a full-blown riot you know it only takes one person to spark that kind of um um activity especially especially in a situation as volatile and as where emotions are as high as what was going on in minnesota so that's another uh conspiracy slash I don't know but I'm, I'm I'm waiting to hear more about it now will the truth of that particular conspiracy ever come out probably not probably not he's gonna protect himself there are some text messages floating around on the internet that are said to be from the officer uh, that was dressed in all black breaking out windows and his girlfriend but are those fake are they real I don't know but it is something interesting to keep an eye on and uh, we'll have to see where that goes 
in other news, I, I, I saw that, uh, I believe seven people were shot in the incident. I don't have the names in front of me. Once again, forgive me. I'm driving. Uh, but there was the incident that happened in, uh, I believe it was either Louisiana or Louisville. And uh, the situation that happened there is tragic. Officers showed up at, once again, the wrong address. They broke into the house. They start shooting. There's a couple laying in bed. The boyfriend or husband, I'm not too sure which, but the boyfriend, uh, after they put, I believe, 13 or 14 bullets in his girlfriend slash wife, whatever, significant other, partner, whatever you want to call it, they lit her up, and I believe it was 13 or 14 times, and he fired back, and then he was arrested. Um, now, put yourself in that guy's shoes. You're laying in bed, and, 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 and he did have a concealed weapon permit not that it matters he was in his own home he didn't need a concealed weapon per permit and he was definitely within his legal rights to protect himself from people just barging into his house so the cops show up at the wrong address go in guns blazing and this guy fires back they had the balls to arrest this guy to arrest this guy after they intruded into his home opened up fire on his family his wife and killed her, and then they had the balls to arrest him. Now, since then, they have let him out. But still, what kind of a fucked up picture is that? Why did it even cross their minds to start arresting this guy when he's the wrong person and they're in the wrong house and they're totally 100% in the wrong? In the wrong. You know, in today's society, I kind of expected as more police departments and more law enforcement agencies are going to body worn cameras that it would help out the situation. You know what I mean? If you're a good cop, you're not doing anything bad. You don't have anything to hide. A camera's great. You know what I mean? It's going to prove that you didn't do anything wrong. I kind of expected that to change. But the problem is, is that I'm not too sure if it is changing anything. It seems to be like you, you still get cops caught on camera being assholes and they don't seem phased by it. And they're, and they're gonna continue to not be phased by it until they start getting held accountable and start having to pay for their actions. You know, today in Southern California in San Diego County, there was another video that came out today of three officers surrounding, now nobody died. Thank God nobody died. But how fucked up is that, that when I see a video interaction, interaction between a police officer and a black male, I am grateful that they didn't kill him. So the whole incident starts off where this, it, it, it starts, you know, one thing about the videos that always sucks is it never tells you the exact 100% full story. But it starts off with a white male police officer holding the front of the shirt of a black male and they are in a argument, a discussion. Now the, the, the black dude, he's not happy, but from what he was saying, it sounded like they were standing on the corner of a property. Um, it looked like a nice neighborhood next to some nice apartments and they're obviously being hassled for hanging out there. And I, I, that's speculation, I'm speculating, I don't know 100%. But the way that that officer treated that man, he was upset, he was upset saying, saying that I live here, I'm waiting for a ride, all this other kind of stuff. Now, the, the guy could be full of shit, he really could. But here we are once again with, in today's climate, with everything that's going on, with everything that's going on, when Minneapolis is burning to the ground, does it not occur to these police officers to be a little more tactful and to watch how they treat people? So this police officer was just taking this guy. This guy's talking back, you know, talking back's not illegal, but you know, it's going to get under the skin of the police officer. Police officer gets mad and he's going to handle things his way when a police officer should never get mad, but it happens. They're human. So the guy's talking back and the police officer takes him and he shoves him down. I mean, just takes him and slams him down, as, and slams him down on his ass on like a concrete bench. And I'm watching this and the, 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 the black guy never touches the officer. He never does anything except use his mouth. Officer puts the hands behind the black male, um, uh, puts handcuffs on him. And apparently the end, the, end, the end result was that they arrested this man for assault. Now, the video that I saw, he was never assaulted. There was an issue going on before the video started, yes. But I can tell you what, if the, if the man would have 
struck the police officer or assaulted him pre uh, before the video started, he would have already been in cuffs. So I think that uh, that didn't happen. But it's, you know, it, where's the integrity? Where's the integrity on officers of the law? When you get pissed off and all you have to do is just make up that one little white lie and get somebody arrested and thrown in jail on a serious charge, assault on an officer, that's a serious charge. And all it takes is any, he said, she said, you know what I mean? That's all it is. And believe me, in our legal systems, in our court systems in this United States of America, if it comes to he said, she said, and it's your word against the word of a, of a law officer, the judge is gonna go with the law officer every time, every time. You know, so it's incidents like that where th this incident I'm talking about right now in uh, San Diego County, where an officer stretches the truth, makes up a lie and says that he was assaulted when he never was, it was clear he was never assaulted. It just fucks it up for all the other good officers, alleged good officers that are out there. You know, a police officer is supposed to be they're, they're supposed to be heroes. They're supposed to be. It's, it, it's a dangerous job. I understand that. It's a dangerous job. It's a very dangerous job. But it didn't become dangerous after you became a police officer. It was dangerous when you entered in and took that as your career. Things haven't changed. And statistically, on the other hand, statistically, in the United States of America, violent crimes, all that kind of nonsense and bullshit is way, way, way down. So it has never been a safer time to be a police officer because society isn't as violent as it used to be. But it hasn't changed. When you signed up to be a police officer, you knew it was a rather dangerous profession. And guess what? To be a police officer, it takes some bravery because you're going to put yourself in positions that normal people wouldn't put themselves in but you have to have control and, and you have to be a, 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 a trustworthy person. You know, you start spreading white lies and getting people arrested. It's just, it fucks it up for everybody. And so I have to look at myself and I look at myself and it's like, on a scale of one to 10, if I was to get pulled over right now, you know, how would I feel about that? I don't want to get pulled over. I don't want to have interactions with police officers. I don't want to have any confrontational interactions with police officers. And I know for damn sure that I'm in a much better position being a white male than I am if I was a person of color. I mean, I'm not an idiot. In fact, I was watching this one, um, I don't have her name in front of me, because once again, I'm driving and I don't have notes and I'm just talking. But I was watching this, uh, this college professor or somebody that was educated that was, it was a white female and she was taking, talking to a, basically a room of pretty much 100% white Caucasian college students or um, kids of that age group. And she said to the group, she said, how many of you in here would trade, want to be treated the way that law enforcement treats people of color? And not one person raised their hand. And she said, well, you must have misunderstood me. How many people in this room want to be treated the same as a person of color in the United States? And once again, nobody raised their hand. Nobody stood up. That says a lot. You know, you can, you can play the card all day long. It's like, well, no, this is all bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Look, statistically, more white people are killed by the cops and blah, 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 blah. Okay, by sheer numbers, yes. But would you trade places with a person of color and deal with your interactions with law enforcement the same way that they do? And the answer for most white people, I'd say 99% of them, if they're really being honest, would be no. No, I don't want to be treated that way. And if you don't want to be treated white that way, that means that there is a problem. Because if there wasn't a problem, you wouldn't care. And so based on that alone, you can see how it's racially unequal. Are all cops that way? No. They're not. But there's enough of them that are to cause issues. Let's see. Ah, oh, crap. Can I get over? Yep, I can get over. Nice. Yeah, I almost missed my freeway. Anyways, this is Jake from Radio Underland. I'm driving on my uh, trip to Long Beach. I've got another, uh, I don't know. 
28 minutes to go, 24 miles. It's a long drive, believe me. Um, but this is gonna be a, kind of a special one-off audio release. Uh, we haven't been doing the video show. One of the reasons why we haven't been doing the video show is because where I live, my internet absolutely sucks balls. And to do a video show from remote locations with Tom and Steph, it just, it just, we've done it. We did like three or four shows that way, but it just did not work well. And I have been sitting on my ass and not doing audio shows, but you know, I figure what the hell, I've got a long drive today and I got some things in my mind that I want to talk about. And so we just, I, when I say we, I mean me and myself because I'm by myself. I'm driving down the 605 freeway. Um, but just through this little show together because I think I, I had I had some things I wanted to get off my check, uh, chest regarding the situation that we're in right now, especially with uh, Mr. George Floyd. May he rest in peace and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just what it is. And it's unfortunate and I just wanted to say something. I need to get it off my chest. Uh, but anyways, it's Jake with Radio Wonderland. Um, give Leave a comment on the show. I mean... It's tough times right now, especially for the podcasting with the type of show that we do. And it's tough to get out there and it's tough to get together right now with the whole COVID-19 and all the bullshit going on. Um, so just give us a, just get, drop us an email. You can hit me at jake at radiounderland.com or leave a comment wherever you're hearing this, uh, this podcast and I'll definitely hear it. Um, but give me your thoughts and opinions. I, I know what I said today was, uh, it, it was definitely uh, unpopular. I, I said some things that are definitely unpopular opinion, and I believe that I said some things that people don't want to hear. Um, but those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts about what's going on. So anyways, this is Jake with Radio Underland, cruising down the freeway. I'm going, what am I going? I'm going 70 miles an hour on the 605. Traffic's not too bad. Um, heading into Long Beach. I got some work to do tonight, or a project to work on tonight. And um, I miss you guys. I miss every. I miss doing the show live. I miss doing it. I miss doing it with the live viewers. I miss uh, you know uh, seeing the comments, especially with Radio Underland. A lot of the people that listen to our show, especially the people that watch it live, uh, they're some of the my favorite assholes in the on the planet. You know, they really get brutal in the comments, and uh, I, I miss them. I miss the whole in, in the, the the live interaction. And I, I just miss doing the show live. So we're gonna get back to that hopefully shortly. But until then. It's Jake with Radio Underland. I don't have any music to play us out. I don't have anything special. Um, but I will talk to you guys later. Be safe out there, man. Be safe out there. And uh, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.